wonderful people out there. All right, today, today, today. I've got a few minutes while I'm on my way to my next meeting. Uh, I gotta change my shirt to I wore this one because I sweat through the other ones really quick, so I wanted to have this shirt on. All right, today is you matter and why. And the reason why I wanna bring up a couple things is there's a few people in my life and there's a few people in your life that you know of today and a couple other days. They're going through some really bad situations. They've been having a bad week, a bad day, a bad year, something like that, okay? And all of us take that stuff for granted. All of us look at what's going on in life like a fly on the wall. And when I say that is, it's kind of like, I, I always remember my sister and my cousins and stuff. They used to have all these um, movie posters and they used to have all these bands and rock bands and groups and stuff. And they were groupies and New Kids on the Block and, and Pantera and uh, Me uh, Metallica and Megadeth and uh, Nine Inch Nails. And they had all this stuff on their walls, right? And that's how we look at our friends sometimes, our posters on the walls. Now, what's really funny is I know a lot of people that grow up and they get married and stuff. But I bet you anything, there's a couple people that you could go back to their parents' house, go into their room, and those posters are still there. They don't even know they're on the walls anymore. Because what happened was, even when the band was no longer popular, they never thought about taking that stuff off the walls. They no longer could see it. They could no longer see the writing on the wall. We always say, you got to look for the writing on the wall. But to me, that saying has got a different meaning. It means the writing on the wall means we no longer can see when somebody's hurting. We no longer see when our friends are having problems. We no longer judge our friends when they're going through depression. My friend Glenn, who was a Marine, and his birthday was a couple uh, days ago, who took his life last year, is one of those people. He talked about the 22 so often. He talked about suicide and how he was depressed so often that we no longer were listening to it. We no longer could see him talking about it anymore. He was talking about it all the time. We just no longer chose to see him talking about it. We no longer chose to see our moms and dads talking about how, how much they wish we'd visit or call. We no longer hear our friends talk about, man, I wish you would call sometime. I could really use your help. We no longer see these things because we've been listening to it for so long that all, every time we open our mouths now, hey man, let's get together, let's go do something, let's do this or that. That becomes the writing on the wall. That becomes the go-to saying for the actual excuses. Hey, I don't know what I'm telling you right now, but I'm not gonna call. By the way, I don't really care. I love you to death, but unless you actually change habit, I no longer see what's going on in your life. Until you actually can tell me that we need to get out of these bad habits. These bad habits of putting everybody off till tomorrow. These bad habits of not thinking outside the box anymore. We are so used to staying in our little square, our little bubble. We are so used to being trapped in our own fantasy that we no longer are any good to ourselves or the people around us because we got into what's comfortable. Now there's a book that I, I personally used to tell everybody to read, it's called The Dream Giver. And I used to give it out to my friends and family. I go buy it for them and not care because I felt this book meant a lot. Now I'm not trying to sell this book, this is nothing, it's Bruce Wilkinson. It has nothing to do with selling a book. I'm not selling anything. But the book always talked about, we get in our comfort zone and we no longer know how to get out of our comfort zone. We no longer know how to move forward in our life. We no longer know what to do to make people know that they matter or they feel good about themselves. We are in this land of safety because we got to a point in our life where we don't want to look behind because we don't want to go through those problems anymore. We don't want to look ahead because we don't ever want to have new problems. Realizing that where we're sitting at right now, we no longer see the starting line where we started and we're sure as heck not across the finish line because we are not where we want to be, but because we are so scared to move any farther, we're trapped in our side ourselves. We are no longer seeing the writing on the wall. We are the movie theater poster that we put on the wall in the 80s, and we don't even know it's there anymore. Why? It's right in front of us, but we can't see it. We are now blind to our own problems. Our friends, relatives, family members, military members, they are having issues today. 
they're having issues to where they need us to step outside of our box. Maybe you had goals in your life and you quit reaching for those goals because they got too hard to go after. We matter because we need to start looking at the finish line or figuring out the direction we were going towards the finish line because we can't see it and we need to start going after it again. Who cares about the problems you're going to encounter? We learned how to take care of the problems in the past by dealing with them. We can learn about the new problems and you know what? We're the happiest when we're moving forward. You know what happens when you get to the land of forgetfulness? The land of the unknown, the forgotten? You get to a point in life that safety and that box you're in is not safe anymore. It's actually holding you back from every goal you ever set for yourself. It's holding you back from helping your friends and family members. It's holding you back from where you need to be and where you need to go. You need to be bigger and better than, the, than who you are today so you can do more tomorrow. Now what am I talking about? Why does Jess sound? I've had friends commit suicide. I can no longer get back. But none of my friends could see their struggles. I've got friends and family members that shoot for goals and they're in businesses and they're so afraid to go talk to anybody that they lose money and they no longer can help anybody yet they have the very thing that they need to help everybody. Somebody may just need you. I know priests that are so scared because all they do is do good with God's work but they're so scared because everybody in the world wants to attack them. They forgot that they're messengers of peace and hope. That they no longer are messengers. They're cowards. We look at problems as in, oh my God, I got another problem. Instead of looking at that problem as something we need. We're never given anything in our life that we cannot get through, get to, or get past. I wish problems upon people. I really do. I wish hardship. You know why? Because hardships help us grow. And you know, I heard that many times by many people saying, you know, I wish hardships upon you. Thinking, man, you're, a, you're, you're not a good person. But now I realize that the harder the things are upon us that we get through, the easier our lives become because now we want something more in life. The more challenges we take on. But if we become that fly on the wall and we do, do good, no, we do good for nobody, including ourselves, then how can we get through the problems that we're facing today? I wish problems upon you so that you can get through it. I was told a long time ago, God would never put you in any situation he couldn't help you get through. There is not a business in the world that's successful where if you don't, you can't find somebody to help you with it, to give you advice in it, to get you through it. Look how many car salesmen are out there that can, you can go ask for advice on selling a car. How about people to go out and get a job? There's always somebody willing to help you, somebody willing to put themselves out there just so that they know that they help somebody. All you gotta do in life is make a difference to one person. The only problem is you will never know who that person is. I wish hardships upon each and every one of you because I believe in each and every one of you. Each and every one of you matters. Each and every one of you makes a difference. Why do you matter? Because you need to get through the land of the unknown and get back to the land of chance and sacrifice and suffering so that you can have a better life. You matter. The people around you matter. I believe in you. I don't care what you do in life. I believe in you as long as you do it for a good reason. My name is Jeffrey Jansen. I'm visiting. A, I got to get going right now. I'm kind of in a little bit of a hurry. I'm at a red light. I got to take a left. I'm in Hannibal. I'm heading down to the historic district. And then I got to put in my GPS where I'm going. Hope everybody of you have a great day. God bless everybody. Talk to you soon.